everyone, it's Mari. Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. In today's video, I will be going over how I set goals and prepare for a new month and a new quarter. I don't think I've ever sat down and thought about how exactly I go about doing this, so this was definitely an interesting video to film. Alright, let's get started. So my planning process can be broadly divided into two stages. First, there's looking back, and second, there is looking forward. And within each of these stages, I take a look at both the month and the quarter. So the first step is to look back on the month that is coming to an end or that has already passed. I think it's really important to review and reflect on the past month because it's difficult to plan and set goals if you don't know how you've been doing up till now. And for this part of the process, I like to journal inside of my diary, which is the B6 Stalogy this year. But you can do this anywhere you'd like. You can do it on your laptop or on a blank piece of paper. It's completely up to you. I enjoy doing my reflections in my diary because the act of writing it all down with pen and paper really helps me to process everything a lot better. And I also like to have the freedom of decorating and collaging. It really gives me that sense of satisfaction that a month is really over. So the prompts that I use throughout this video are from Lavender's Plan With Me videos. They've been working well for me for over a year now, so I'm continuing to use them. So as I journal, I answer the following prompts. Describe the month in one word. On a scale of 1 to 10, did I take steps this month to get closer to my goals and dream life? What were the highlights of the month? What did I learn this month? What am I proud of? And how can I improve moving forward? When I'm reviewing the past month, I find that it's very helpful to look back over my planners and my phone to remind myself of what I've done. By the time the month is over, I can barely remember what I did the first week of the month, so this is especially helpful for me. I think it's so important to acknowledge how far you've come, no matter how big or small. I know that I tend to get bogged down by all of the tasks and goals that I didn't accomplish, so it's always nice to focus on what I have achieved instead and give myself a pat on the back. I look back over my bullet journal, my health and wellness journal, my one line a day journal, and on my phone I go over my card diary app. Next, we're looking back on the past quarter. So aka, it's time for a quarterly review. No matter how many times it happens, I'm always surprised by how quickly a month ends and how quickly the year passes. Because this part of the process involves a lot of writing and also a lot of repeating what I've already written for past monthly reviews, I like to use Notion for this step. I recently watched a video by Nika Nikita where she goes over how she organizes her life and she shared a beautiful Notion template for her yearly planning. So for this step, I will be using her template, which I've tweaked a little, to answer the following prompts. What are you proud of? What were the highlights of this quarter? What are the biggest lessons I've learned? How did I do on my quarter one goals? And what am I most excited about moving forward? Before I found this template, I just started a blank page in my notes section of Notion, which worked just as well. So use whatever feels right for you. Okay, we're done with the looking backstage. So now it's time to look forward, starting with a bigger picture, and plan for the next quarter. I think it's better to go in reverse when you're planning ahead because it gives you a broader overview of what you want to accomplish before you dive into the nitty gritty details. So first, I will choose a theme for the quarter. How do I want this next quarter to feel? And what do I most want to prioritize? For the second quarter of the year, I am going with the word flourish. Next, I list all of the goals and projects that I want to have completed by the end of the quarter. 
I'm currently taking online courses, so I start by writing down tasks related to my studies first because there's already a suggested schedule for that and a set timeline. Then I take a look at my bucket list for the year and I write down the goals I would like to have made progress on by the end of the next quarter. And finally, I write down any fun activities and goals that I'd like to include. Now that I've listed everything, I can break these down and spread them out over the course of the next three months. And because I'm planning far ahead, I really don't hold myself too tightly to this schedule because a lot can change as the year progresses and I think it's important not to beat yourself up over it if you don't stick to this schedule. So think of it more as a guide than a rule. Of course, try to complete the goals and projects that do actually have a set deadline. I like to use Notion for this step because if these plans change, then I can just go in and update it without making a mess. But if I want to keep reminding myself of what goals and projects are coming up, then I will use sticky notes in my daily planner, which is my Hobonichi Weeks Mega. It'll just be a quick little note to myself that says, hey, these are the goals your past self set. This way, if anything changes, my planner doesn't need to become a flaming piece of trash in the process. Okay, we're at the final step. It's time to look forward and plan for the upcoming month. I like to use both Notion and my diary for this step. So first, I will set an intention for the month. This is pretty similar to setting a theme for the quarter, I just ask myself, how do I want this month to feel? So my intention for April is, April will be purposeful. Next, I write down my three main goals, which I would have gotten an idea of from the previous step. Finally, I write down my three mini goals, which are any fun activities or habits that I want to maintain throughout the month. I also like to include a short sentence at the end about what my reward would be if I complete my main goals. This way, I have something to look forward to. This is usually something stationary related for me. And once I have filled out my monthly page in Notion, I will also update my homepage because I look at it quite a bit throughout the month. And at this point, I will go back to my Hobonichi Weeks Mega and write down my main goals at the bottom of my monthly calendar. And then I will break down my goals into weekly, bite-sized pieces, which I write on a sticky note and stick on the day that it's due. I just started doing this in March and I've been loving it. It's really helped to keep me on track. And that is how I set goals and plan for a new month and a new quarter. My planning process is not groundbreaking or original. <laughs> it's something that I've built over the years by observing what works for other people and tweaking it so that it suits my needs. I hope that this video was helpful, and if it was, I hope you will consider liking and subscribing. That's all for now. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!